The GB News Tavern is open for me for the last time for Talking Pints. I am joined by the wonderful Maggie Oliver, founder of the Maggie Oliver Foundation, an organisation that empowers and supports the victims and survivors of sexual abuse. Maggie, cheers. My first white wine guest. Cheers, Lawrence. How are you doing? Uh, I'll be a lot better after this. Mm. <laughs> Can I ask you a question, which has always bothered me? Mm-hmm. Why do they call them grooming gangs when they're not grooming gangs? Because I think that language has been... It is important and it plays down the magnitude of what these abusers, they are rapists and they are destroying lives of countless children. So grooming um, really doesn't do justice to what they do because, you know, the the work that I do now in, in the Maggie Oliver Foundation, we're trying to help victims and survivors put their lives back together every single day. And the damage that child abuse does to any child that goes through it um, is actually, in, in many ways, um, it will stay with that person forever. Um, but they are rapists. And because we, 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 we've interacted on TV before, and, and you made this point, which is stuck in my head to this day, which is you said you can't deal with a problem unless you name the problem. Unless you say, this is what is happening and this is who is doing it. Yeah. Why are we so frightened in this country to turn around and say, this is what is happening and this is who is doing it? Because I think we tiptoe around the truth. I, I remember, you know, um, I gave 16 years of my life to being a police officer. I believe in justice. I believe in the criminal justice system. But what I saw was, I couldn't believe what I was, saw, uh, what I was seeing. Um, and... When I first started to speak out, um, nobody would refer to the ethnicity of the offenders in the grooming gangs. What I would say is that at the foundation, we deal with um, child abusers from all kinds of ethnicities, whether it's in the family, whether it's an uncle or a teacher or a, you know, but the grooming gangs, which is what they're called, they are predominantly Pakistani Muslim men. And and I remember being on the Today programme with John Humphreys and they were always referred to as Asian grooming gangs. Um, And I pulled him up and I said, John, they are really not. They're not from Japan and they're not from Thailand. They are predominantly Pakistani Muslim um, men from a particular part of Pakistan. And I believe that we, in order to change things and put them right, we first of all have to acknowledge where the problem is. And if we are not even going to speak that truth, then how are we ever going to address it? I want to open up the conversation within that community. Um, I mean, in the foundation, we are actually supporting some women who are being abused within their own community. They are terrified of coming to us, um, but they will not go to the police because they are um, stigmatised. They are. It, it's a really complicated situation. But we're not very much further on now than we were 10 years ago, except now we have awareness. And if there's one thing that um, I think I'm fairly proud of is that I opened up this subject to the country. The drama three girls that, you know, I was the programme consultant on, um, it doesn't go far enough. It lets the police off very easily. It lets the CPS off very easily. But what it did do, it educated the country in what was happening to generations of young white girls throughout mostly the north of England and I think that that was the first step. We still have chief constables, we still have those at the top of these organisations still trying to say these are problems of the past, these are historical problems. Everything now is hunky-dory. Well, I'm telling you and anybody who's listening, that is not true because every single day in the foundation We're not only supporting survivors who are long since beyond the criminal justice system. We're approached every day by victims who today are going to the police and trying to get their um, rapists prosecuted. Um, They struggle. Um, We all know that policing and the criminal justice system is in a complete and utter mess. There's a lack of training. There's not enough investment. But there's Um, also an obsession with this idea of anti-racism. I remember when I stood for London Mayor, I asked the Metropolitan Police representative who has to meet the mayoral candidates, I said, are you an anti-racist organisation? He said, absolutely. And there was a sort of 
commitment in his eyes, which was so ideological and weird. And I was like, why are you not focusing on just solving crime, number one, for the taxpayer, so that we feel safe? Um, it must be very... I hope, it's so interesting listening to what you're saying because you're, you're taking out of the biggest darkness that there is a hope and an optimism that you want to bring to people. So you're talking about the Magdalena Foundation will take anybody who is the victim of yeah, abuse. Anybody. So you're not, you're, it's not like you're targeting specifically no. British Pakistani men no. who have a slightly different cultural attitude to the treatment of women. You're turning around and going, these are the facts. We will accept anybody and we, we will work and help you to build a better life. And, and is that the antidote to, to the, yeah. poli- the politicking around this? Yeah, I mean, I, I really don't get drawn into the, the debate about racism because it's irrelevant to me. You know, if a man rapes a child of 11 or 12 and, you know, on the Rochdale case, we even had a fetus. I, I don't care where that rapist comes from. I don't care if he's a, a, a priest in the Catholic Church. I don't care if he's a Pakistani Muslim taxi driver. I don't care if he's my next door neighbour. Um, child abuse is wrong. And if we do not stand up and say that openly as a country, what we are doing, we are allowing them to continue and we are failing the children who have nowhere else to go. But in the foundation, they can come to us and we will fight their corner. And am I allowed to swear? Yes. (laughs) Can I not? (laughs) I won't say anything really bad. All right, I won't swear. Well, I don't care who I upset. Um, I will speak the truth, you know, and... Sometimes the truth hurts. And where my anger goes is to chief constables, to the Home Secretary, to politicians who have knowingly turned away from this problem for decades. Cowardly. Yeah. They've, they've, I call it willful blindness or keep it under the carpet. Um, you know, I didn't know that this... I'm, I'm known for grooming gangs. Ten years ago, 12 years ago, when I first resigned... I can't tell you how naive I was then. I'm not naive anymore. My blinkers are well and truly off. And we are there to fight for those who will be ignored. Um, But they're not alone. Uh, We're supported by the public. You know, uh, we don't have money from the police, from the government, because I don't want anybody to be able to say to me, you can't say that or we're going to withhold. So if, if the public don't support us, we will not be here anymore. So, but we are there to fight alongside any victim of, of sexual abuse, whether it's a, you know, somebody... The, as you quite rightly pointed out, the Catholic Church reformed itself in, in, a, in a small way, but it reformed itself. It acknowledged its sins of the past and it said we were moving uh, priests around and not dealing with the problem. So there is a problem here and this problem needs reforming. We need to, as a country, we need to go... We all we, we are a multicultural country, yeah. whether we like it or not. Yeah. And we have to turn around and say, guys, these are the values. This is what Britain stands on. Yeah. And you don't get to rape white girls. It's just no. No, I mean, w- I what I always happen. say, Lawrence, is that, and I, I might get the quote wrong, but, you know, all it takes for evil to survive is that good people do nothing. The good men do nothing. The good stand yeah. widely by. Yeah, so, you know, everybody who sees this, stand up and shout that it's wrong. You know, the community from within which the abusers come in this particular kind of crime, I want to work with that community because there are good people in there. Some of them are frightened, but I would like to see them speaking out about it. The other part of this problem for me is those at the top of organisations who um, do not think it's worth putting the the resources in because, let's face it, many of these victims are from very difficult backgrounds. You know, they're not Boris Johnson's daughter or kids were well, you know um, they're not his children people, the people are battling in spain yeah people of all, yeah all, of them all over all. the show and i remember the chief constable in greater manchester when i began to speak out peter fry he knew and i'm not i'm not libeling him i'm saying what he said in the media quite openly when i was saying you know what was going on this is not right he said that i was a woman who would become too emotionally involved. I had lost... Isn't that misogynistic as well? Yeah, I was bereaved. You know, all those things. Now, I would like to see chief constables held criminally to account 
when they do not do what their duty is. Because like me, I promise to uphold the law, to protect the vulnerable, to, um, act with impartiality, uphold fundamental human rights. What they have done in these cases is the complete opposite of that. And they are guilty, in my mind, of gross criminal neglect, misconduct in a public office. And I want to see one of them standing in a court of law, facing prison. And I can guarantee that we would never see these failures again, because everybody would be looking at their big fat pension and walking out the door. I don't blame police officers on the ground. They are, you know, trying to juggle monumental crime cues. They are not paid properly anymore. There is a skills gap. They are not being trained. We are policing on the cheap. We've got victims waiting five years to get to a trial. Go on my Twitter, Maggie Oliver UK. Go on my LinkedIn. I'm sharing stories virtually every day of another victim being failed. And it is the system that is failing them and pretending that they're not. And I want those people to be shouting out, Senior social workers, council workers, not another review. You sense that they, you sense that there is, there's a coming need for it. Now, can I just say thank you <laughs> for welcome. my copy of Maggie Oliver, Fighting for Justice, Survivors. Um, where can people get this? On Amazon. Uh, go to our website, www.themaggieoliverfoundation.com. We share survivor stories. We share examples of failures. You can uh, volunteer with us. You can... Uh, donate to us, you can fundraise, you can... Well, there's all sorts on there. Well, what's so great uh, is that out of a load of pain and darkness and suffering, you're bringing hope. And to that, you are my hero. Oh, thank you, Lauren. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. Thanks.